so let there be no way back. From that temptation, I sunder us. No more shall man have wings to bear him to paradise. Henceforth, he shall walk. Let's start Final Fantasy. Right. Curtises. So we're like at the, the last stretch then. I feel like there's still more to be done. There's so much more to be done. Wait, hold on. I have a question. Is Emmett Selk's um, convocation name Hades? Because I was explaining it to Sevia earlier. Like, Elidibus was Elidibus's convocation name. That was his duty. Is his name Hades? Was Elidibus his convocation name? Yeah, because he says that it was his but, duty as Elidibus yeah. to, to do what he needed to do. Is that right? Clarify, please. Just, I just want to make sure I got that straight. But as Emmett Selk, I have, oh, okay, there, he clarified. He is Emmett Selk, so he has a duty as an Emmett Selk. So that clarified it. That very statement just said that his seat is Emmett Selk. But Hithlidaeus is just Hithlidaeus. Hithlidaeus denied the Emmett Selk seat. Okay, so otherwise, Hithlidaeus would have been Emmett, Emmett Selk. Selk. And yeah. Emmett Selk, we would just be calling Hades. Hades. Yeah. Well, that doesn't that makes... make it confusing at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were. Yeah, right. Got it. So, yeah, they all wanted to be masked people. What was that movie with Tom Cruise in it with the masks? That's what it reminded me of. Anyways, don't, don't worry about it. Yeah, it's all, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> Sex shut? It's oh. eyes wide shut. <laughs> but there was a lot of sex stuff in it. They were like a hidden uh, d d group of people who wore masks and did stuff in the night. They were occultists. Yes, but sex cultist stuff. Gotcha. Cinematography wise, it was fantastic. Oh. Story wise. Whew. You know, I'm in the middle of this book about Mozart. Yep. I just said that. Um, yeah, I'm in the in the middle of this biography about Mozart, and they were talking about how back in the the 18th century, before Lent, Catholic countries would have what they call carnival, which I didn't I didn't know about this. Have you have you no. heard about? You're Catholic. No. Okay, so they would have a, a, a carnival, and it would be like weeks of just sexing with your mask on. That it sounds would, like the movie we're just talking about. That's why I brought it up, because I thought it was really interesting that they would have carnival. So Mozart and his dad were like romping around Europe during his childhood, and they like came upon just one of the cities in Europe, and and carnival was happening, and and Leopold, Mozart's his dad, like wrote home about it and was like, when the fuck is this? Okay. That was the whole point, right? I thought it was very interesting, but they would they would have these rompy parties where they would sex each other up in masks, so nobody so nobody could get onto them, and, and nobody knew um, who they were having sex with. <laughs> this is the premium content that I should have waited for the ad for. Because it's talky. That's why I grabbed it from you. Talky talky rumba. My apologies for keeping you waiting. I understand there is a matter you wish to discuss. Aye. A matter of the utmost gravity. If one can suspend disbelief. <laughs> <laughs> if you like story. Go on then. Tell him what you told us. Who you are and why you came. Oh. You're so purple. Isn't it so good? Let me tell you, okay, the world is going to end because you guys are crazy. Final days. That's what we said. The phenomena observed during these star-encompassing calamities is likely the product of a dynamous reaction. 
And none is more vast in the applications of this energy than you, Hermes. I must stress that we do not believe you would desire such destruction. We come not to lodge accusations, but to beg your wisdom. And so, distressing though the exercise may be, I ask that you share with us your opinion on the matter, on the assumption that our visitor's tale is true. Even you, Vena. As you say, the phenomena observed in the two calamities may both be attributed to Dynamis. Of note is the difference in its effect. In the first final days, it warped creation magics. In the second, it warped the people themselves. The key variable, I suspect, is the etheric density of the men of each age. As you know, ether, in essence, negates dynamis. Harboring high concentrations of ether, we ancients cannot readily manipulate dynamis, nor be manipulated by it. Therefore, rather than ourselves, the calamity affected our magics. Interesting. In contrast, having been sundered, the people of the future are composed of but a fraction of our ether. Thus are they susceptible to the influence of Dynamis and its transformative potential. But that would explain only the mechanism, not the cause. Though perhaps... What is it? Even should it be a hypothesis, we would hear it. Dynamis is an energy put in motion by feelings. Feelings for which there must first exist a source. A source to which the victims must be attuned. One that harbors the self-same negative emotions. Elsewise, it could not be the agent of such extreme change. Oh, so it wasn't thinking. the stagnation of the celestial currents. Someone, or something, is instigating the star's demise. Seems what I see. So, we've a villain on our hands after all. Any idea who or what it could be? The celestial currents comprise the outermost layer of the star's ether, encasing it like a protective sphere. According to your tale, it was where the currents were weakest that the phenomena first manifested. If the inciting factor came from without a theris, then its effects would first be seen in those locations. The plot thickens. Greetings. Can you hear me? Uh-oh. She crazy. Do not be alarmed. I mean you no harm. No, she's just a receptor. Yeah, she's a receptor. I wish only to hear your words, share your feelings, know your thoughts. Typical fun. May we please be friends? Meteon. What is it? Executing scheduled task, suspending individual self, and connecting to shared consciousness. Connection established. Commencing status report. Oh, shit. Oh. It hurts, it hurts. It hurts. So hot, so cold, so sad. I don't understand. Make it stop. Please, make it stop. Steady, Meteon. Steady. So scared. So lonely. The pain. It's too much. <laughs> Why? Why? Why do we... Uh, hurt? Uh. 
Oh, she's turning creepy. She's gone, but how? She has altered her etheric density in order to blend in with her surroundings, an ability for avoiding confrontation. That's useful. Most effective. Frustratingly so. I can't see her either. Not even a trace. Stay away. Please. This is wrong. My mistake. So please. Are you all right? Did they not see us in agony earlier? Yeah, right. In your mind? No. We only heard her speak the instant before she vanished. Of course. When communicating without words, Meteon also employs Dynamis. They must have... Her sisters must have seen something on the other side. That would explain why you were able to hear her when we could not. Then you are our best chance of finding her. Follow her voice and try to track her down. Hindered though we may be, let us split up and search as well. This is what I predicted. This is what I predicted. But you predicted it like of her own free will. No, I thought I, th I think some I thought something was gonna happen to her and she was gonna be the cause of the free will. There, on the bridge. Man, she is running. They'll stop her because it's a bridge. She can't go anywhere else. Aha! Give chase. We shall herd her into the shelter. Wow, what a cool horse. She's been hiding that the whole time. <gasps> A scary looking horse, but it looks awesome. What did he call this place? The shelter. Oh. <laughs> the adults have cornered you. You cannot Please, run. Mision. We must speak. Individual self suspended. Connection with shared consciousness stable. Uh oh. Oh, she got dark. Yeah, she did. Our survey is complete. We shall now report our findings. Everyone got dark. All units safely arrived at their respective destinations. 
Seeking answers to Hermes' question, we attempted to make contact with the intelligent denizens of each star. Results are as follows, in order of numerical code. Enna. Traces of civilization found. Structures believed to have served as domiciles. No extant life forms detected. Dio. Ruined remnants of buildings scattered across star, surface of which is encased in ice. Presence of life could not be verified. Tria. Evidence of large population centers, akin to cities recovered. No extant life forms found, only their lingering essence. They're all dead. Tessera. Edifices surmised to be abandoned residences found. No extant life forms detected. Deadly plague or extreme environmental degradation likely to have led to mass extinction. They are all... dead. Something killed them all. Doctor. Star found in state of violent conflict. Contact successfully made with inhabitants. But deployment of weapons of mass destruction resulted in total annihilation of local population shortly thereafter. Inea. Star is a barren desert. No identifiable flora found. Bones of living beings resembling men discovered beneath sands. But determination regarding their intelligence inconclusive. Remind me, Hermes. What exactly was the question you entrusted to Meteon? It's because Meteon's the messenger. I tasked her with asking what others live for. Yes. What gives their lives... Meaning. Did you consider what may happen if the premise of the question is flawed? Mm. To be able to answer it, one must be living and desire to continue doing so. But if Meteon finds no living beings in the course of her journey, or none who desire to live, what then? What answers would she derive from their silence? <sighs> Despair. Meteon, enough. Suspend your mission and return hither at once. Decapente. Local civilization once flourished under auspices of higher power. Said power later laid waste to civilization in fit of rage. Upon revealing this to me, Entity elected to self-terminate in lieu of providing answer to question. No other intelligent life forms found. Turning a deaf ear, are we? We are taking Meteon back to Amarant. As I understand, we will need her if we are to bring back all of her sisters. It, yes. Meteon. It isn't right, is it? It isn't right to turn away from the answer. Even if the answer... is pain. Mm. Even if we aberrations must scream ourselves hoarse to be heard. Aye, 
Whatever answers we find, I will not dismiss them out of hand. These words I said to you, and I will hold myself to them. What are you doing? He's gonna protect her. What is the meaning of this? You cannot take Meteor. Not until she has finished her report. Shit. All else must wait. Oh my god. Got a cool mount. Yeah, she did. You fool! And thus the final days began. So she didn't find anything. Her current sense of being is is just a result of not finding anything. Is what I gather. From the moment we met you, our visit has devolved into a never-ending series of complications and irritations. In spite of this, I have gained one useful thing, an awareness of dynamics. I think that a power with the potential to corrupt either had largely escaped our notice. Whether or not I believe your tale, the facts underpinning your narrative will be the source of much debate. So understand that I can't, I act not for the sake of your fantastical quest. My duty demands that I apprehend Medion. And if that now means Hermes as well, then so be it. I said that Hermes was likely perched somewhere at the highest point of the facility, but reaching him would be no mean feat. To put it simply, Tissus Hyperborea contains a multitude of vast spaces linked together at the seams, meaning the interior is far more massive than even this grand structure might otherwise suggest. But Bigger on the inside? Yeah. But even a colossal facility filled top to bottom with savage creations will not stop you. Not with Vinan Emmet Suck at your side, and I will be there too, of course, cheering you. Bleak as the contents of Medion's report might be, many could hear it and remain content with their lives, but not Hermes. For him, the veneer of perfection has long been cracked, and it was to the distant heavens he looked for the means to repair it. I understand his anguish after a fashion. My own refusal to return is in opposition to the world's established order. Yet for me, the imperfections only enhance the fragile beauty of our star. I will fight to see it delivered from destruction, warts and all. <laughs> all right, we're ready. Oh. Oh, he can be a dark knight? That's interesting. Wow. Different environments. Oh, that's cool music. I like this one. It's my jam. All right, we're good. Everyone's here. You guys do look like you have the same face model. <laughs> Ready, check. <laughs> wow, he's got three heads. Uh oh. What happened? I have no idea. <laughs> I was focused on my rotation, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Got him. I think we'll be A-OK. -okay. We haven't had a good wipe in a while. <laughs> Lost weird thing. Is that a thing? It's flying out. Ooh, we got it. Here we go. High five. Wing Defiance. Hermes. Hermes. So, it comes to this. I have no wish to fight, but this time, I cannot yield. Though the world may think me a mad, desperate fool, I will hold fast to my conviction. Man, 
damn, we've got to beat okay. Fan Danny so many times. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, we're good. I will have the time and tranquility I require. Just and pale, gather to me. <laughs> okay, don't be in front of those doors, I'm assuming. Don't be in front of the doors. Pinching. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think this this theme is like hide behind the rock. I'm going. But behind the rock, that's not glowing. Okay. Get away from the rock. I'm away from the rock. Oh, wait. There we go. Okay. Oh, you were supposed to move out of that. Were you just standing on it? <laughs> oh, don't be on that. What happened? Oh. Yeah. Point it away from each other. Point, point it away. away from each other. Like that. And then get away from it. Get off it. Get off it. You survived at that time. Wow. Good job. I am learning. Look at me. Got him. Bubba, are you ready to go outside? No, no we have cutscenes. Why? Uh oh. Oh no. Oh no. Hermes. Why would you get him excited? Oh, we're sad. We're not proud of beating Hermes. He's talking, talking. Why, you want to hold it? Nope. Oh, <laughs> man. Yes, it's but over, how do you Hermes. say that? In the name of the convocation, I hereby take Meteon into custody. And setting aside the matter of your nomination, you will come with us too. We require your knowledge to assess and resolve the situation. It's gyros, <clears throat> man. <laughs> you know it's not. Meteon, I am so sorry, but that I could have listened to your report in full. Reflected upon its meaning and conveyed it to others. That they might reconsider their chosen course. But I have failed. And that wish will never be realized. However, ere our fates become the province of others, I bid you tell me just one thing. Was there happiness in those distant stars? Was there a reason for living? We conducted our search as per your instructions. We scoured historical records, communed with the spirits of the deceased. Heard the final testaments of the dying. Welcomed their shadowed hearts into our own. One race had striven to create a world bereft of animosity. They renounced relationships to avoid interpersonal strife. And in so doing, brought about societal collapse. One race had renounced war and devoted itself to the enrichment of its people. They were conquered. Though they destroyed the enemy in reprisal, they could not regain their former glory. 
One race had concluded that finite time was the root of all woes. Aspiring to shatter its shackles, they went in search of infinity. They discovered nothing is infinite, and that neither time or death can be cheated. Disillusioned, they gave up on the future, and themselves. One race had discarded all things that gave rise to sorrow, hoping to have only joy. They found joy lost its savour in the absence of sorrow, and lost their will to live. The worlds apart, these people shared a belief. The belief that they had tried their best. That they had tried to fulfill their potential with every step and success. In the course of which, they learned the truth. That they would never be free of fear and sorrow, anger and despair, of loneliness, so long as they yet lived. Even now, their souls cry out for oblivion. And to this song of anguish, I lend my voice. We lend our voice. Oh, beloved mankind, shimmering jewels of beautiful Etheris, rejoice, for we will free you from the cruel yoke of existence. There is no need to struggle in vain. For in nihility await salvation. You will know peace and serenity. And it will be beautiful. She crazy, man. She crazy. We Damn, you call that. We will make our nest at the edge of the universe. And there in the dark of dead worlds, hold sorrow and suffering. We will sing, our chorus ever louder and ever clearer, that our song may reach even this ether-shrouded star. Such is the answer we have found in the stars. Such is the gift we now offer to a fairies. Well, now... Who are you to decide our fate? To decree we live or die? What are you doing? Have you lost your mind? You heard what she said. She means to destroy us all, yet you'd still take her side? In the name of the star, we have discarded those creations that we deemed flawed. If we ourselves are flawed, does it not stand to reason that we too should be discarded? That is sophistry, and you know it! Perhaps it is. Perhaps I am wrong. Who is to say that you are right? Let us settle this with a determination. In my authority, as Chief Overseer of Elpis. I will make a judgment on man's fitness to exist. If he can learn to value all life and retain his will to live, even should his end be justified, he will surely find a way to avert his demise. 
All right. If not, he will perish from the start. As with all determinations, provisions must be made to ensure fairness. Kairos! Awaken! Memory reconfiguration system Kairos activated. Awaiting instruction. Command. Universal memory alteration. Target area. Catesis Hyperborea. Starting point. Arrival of Emmett Selk of the Convocation at Propylia. Uh -huh. End point. The present. You will forget Raise everything. the memories of all events. Replace with a vague recollection of the following. I was here, preparing to demonstrate the functionality of Kairos to Emmett Selk. In Hither days, Meteon's shared consciousness became unstable. She and her sisters could not sustain their existence, and all dissipated with a burst. The resultant shockwave accidentally triggered Kairos, which erased several days of memories from all present. Execute. Command acknowledged. Initializing. Three processes remaining to execution. Bravo. I dare say one would be hard pressed to make it fairer. Everything that you told us, everything that has happened, the fact we've even met, it will all be gone. Go, Meteor, to the edge of the universe, where none can reach you. Hermes, won't you come with me? If you were to shed your flesh, I should be able to carry you. <laughs> I will remain. As a man, I will oppose the oblivion you bring. Silly fool. Had you said yes, I would have granted you the gentlest end. She is crazy. She is all red rum like. Wow. This ends here! Fly, Meteor! That is far enough, Hermes! Argos, to me! Whoa. First process complete. Two remaining to execution of memory reconfiguration. As if we needed more pressure. We need no to leave. No matter what, you cannot forget what happened today. For it is the key to saving your future. Your world. This fight is our fight. What comes after, our problem to contend with. Not yours. No. Your own struggle awaits. And no one else can take your place. You must flee this place with your memories intact. And I will see that you do. Now then, where is it? There you are, my little confluence. Argos flies so fast. Oh. 
Very well, then. You may elude us this day, but not forever. What has she put on her? Meteon's gotten away. Second process complete. One remaining to execution. Ugh. No time for brooding. Listen well. Beyond lies a spatial confluence that connects the interior sections of this building. I will destroy the confluence and force open a way outside. When I do, you must jump through. I cannot tell you how sorry I am. But neither can I let you escape! Ah. We got in front of it. Adeline's going to save us. Too brave by half. Exemplary work, as always, Emmett Selk. What? But how? I thought the confluence was... over... Over there? Yes. We were rather hoping you would. It was never anywhere but where it is now. The instant those two began making their way towards nothing, it was clear the plan was a diversion. I'm quite incapable of destroying a confluence, I must confess. A gambit brazen beyond words. Though we've grown accustomed to reckless improvision due to the antics of an incorrigible associate. Though, in the case of certain present company, incorrigible is an understatement. Honestly, I'm beginning to suspect it's a requirement for every Azen. <laughs> That's why we're in Azem too. There's no time! Quickly! Even now, I do not believe your tale. I would not suffer us to walk such a wretched path. Still, if it must be said, do not squander it, the legacy I leave you. Process complete. Mm. Ah. Executing universal memory alteration. Go, Argos! Oh, that's why she remembers everything. And becomes Hydaelyn. I'm fine. Just a little tired. Girl, I would be too. Can it be true? Are we the only ones left who see beauty in the world? In life? Wait, like us too? Or like the whole star? 
Are the stars above no more than husks of fallen civilizations? And yet, I feel her. Though she is unimaginably distant, I feel Meteon's presence and the place where too we must go. Ere she made good her escape, I placed an enchantment upon her, one which allows us to follow her trail. It's like an apple tag. Yeah, got it. She's got a GPS tracker on her. Yeah. She has already left the outermost bounds of Atheris and continues on her way. Given the vastness of the universe, it will still be no easy feat to track her down. But thanks to Emmet Selk and his Ladeus, all is not lost. We remember. So long as we remember, our fates remain ours to shape. So what now? What indeed. Let us begin by ascertaining the situation at Catesis Hyperborea, where the others should still be. She Is it Catesis? Yeah, I think so. That's what she said. I thought it was just Thesis. Yeah. I need my Greek translator. Given the likely state of their memories, however, it would be imprudent for us to approach them directly. In which case... I am sorry, my friend. I've asked much of you this day. But may I trouble you one last time? Argus said no. Argos will investigate in our stead. Oh, okay, okay. We will share in his consciousness and see and hear as if we were with him. Doggy vision. And then we now, can feel. Close your eyes and open your mind. See, hear. you are unharmed. Unharmed? There is a gaping hole in my memories. I can scarcely remember arriving here in Alpus. Forgive me. I was preparing to demonstrate the functionality of Kairos to our guests. But Meteon, her shared consciousness became unstable. And she... she... So, that's what prompted the state of alert. And when you went to investigate, you were caught in Kairos' accidental operation. My god, oh no. He believes his own stuff as well. So it would seem. <sighs> it's all a blur to me. Such an unfortunate accident. Oh, and what of Vena and your other companion? You went inside together, as I recall. We did? If Vena was with us, I have no recollection of it. Uh, uh, <laughs> but that there is her familiar, is it not? The fellow seems happy enough, so... I think it's safe to assume his mistress is well. I haven't the slightest notion who this other companion might be, however. Ah, well, that individual struck me as a bit different, for want of a better word. 
<laughs> Perhaps it wasn't actually a person, but some manner of creation. <laughs> Curious. I must ask Venara about it when next we meet. <laughs> We're all different, guys. Yes, yes, you do that. Now, if we may tend to Hermes, whatever this Meteon did, it seems he bore the brunt of it. <laughs> it wasn't you guys or anything. Once you are fit to travel, you will return with us to Amarot. We need to make certain there are no other ill effects. Also, I am here on business of the 14. We've already had the conversation, like as not, but since your toy wiped my memory, we'll have to have it again. Yes, of course, as you see fit. This Kairos, it manipulates memories through the emission of etheric waves, correct? There is a theory which holds that memories scoured by blasts of ether are restored when the soul is cleansed in the underworld. Mm. Oh. Is that why Emmett remembers when he... Interesting. When, when we beat him. If true, then perhaps when our time comes to return to the star, we shall remember these few days we have lost. Oh. I doubt aught of interest occurred. Look forward to the revelation if you like, but I should prefer to reminisce on more meaningful moments. So mad. Let us rest, if only for a while. After all, you and I, oh, we still have a long, long way to go. Damn right. Wow. Our time is coming to an end. My bag of chips has come to an end. <laughs> so, it is within. The portal that brought you hither and will take you home. Yeah. Th this is where I'm going to bounce. This is where she's going to bounce. May you and yours emerge triumphant. May you and yours emerge triumphant. But you won't. Make use of the knowledge you have gained. That your days in Elpis and our friend's sacrifice be not in vain. With Meteon free to pursue her designs, it is only a matter of time until the final days are upon us. We must be ready. From fortifying our defenses to securing our escape, there is much to be done. In spite of this, we cannot allow the report that set this calamity in motion to become common knowledge. Were the masses to learn the fates of the other stars, I fear the situation would spiral out of our control. That's like what the Charlians were saying. I must carefully consider who can be trusted and bring them into the fold. Ordinarily, I wouldn't hesitate to call upon the Fourteen. However, it was the desire for a fair determination that drove Hermes to attempt to erase our memories. And were he made aware of his actions, there is no telling whether he would remain a friend or become a foe. Alternately, we might try to alienate him from the Convocation. Yet in doing so, we would deprive ourselves of a brilliant mind who would be invaluable in the crises to come. 
quite the dilemma. Which is why I must work independently of the Convocation. Regardless of how we proceed, if we are to permanently avert the final days, we must be equal to Hermes's challenge. We must prove that mankind is worthy to exist. And this hinges, I think, on how we confront the all-consuming despair that accompanies a senseless and seemingly inevitable end. Bewildered and divided, we would perish like the peoples of those celestial ruins. We could not hope to survive the final days, much less take the battle to Meteon at her nest. We must find a way to defeat despair, to unite and prepare as many as possible for the struggle ahead. That's why they don't turn. Some people don't turn because because they want to live, which is the thing that she couldn't find in other worlds. That's why she can't turn them. Mm. That's deep. Heavy will weigh the burden of guiding this legion of souls. Yet I have faith in mankind's potential. As long as he believes in himself, there is naught he cannot achieve. So I will not give up on him. On us. You may find your world to be very different. Or perhaps the erasure of our friend's memories has sown the seeds of a conjunction between us. We cannot know until the moment is at hand. So shall I strive to do my best, taking naught for granted as I walk my path. And I pray you walk with me to the end. As you move forward, so too will I, as will all, resolved to fight for the morrow. And when mankind has found the strength to stand against despair, we shall silence the song of oblivion. Mm -hmm. She who sings it will learn our journey is far from over. This I promise. Fare you well, my light of the future, till we meet again. Oh, that's why we're warriors of light. Like you came out of Mary Poppins. What? <laughs> <laughs> Without an umbrella. From this day forth, I shall strive to bring honor to the seat of Fandani. Even now, I remember standing there, locked in a moment where the sky is aflame.
Where stars fall as tears and screams darken the seas. Where resignation rots the trees. Where terror twists magics into abominations. Such is the lament of they who have gone before. The song of they who tried and failed to create a better world. The song of the end. She just watched it again. That which hides at the edge of the universe is no longer hope's creation. It is hopelessness incarnate. That day, mankind saw half of its number sacrificed to bring forth Zodiac. And covering the star in a shroud of ether, we forestalled the final days. Yet the cries echoed still. We wept for innocence lost, wailed for death inevitable. A reality too terrible to bear. And for too many who sought comfort in gilded memories of joyful days and tranquil nights. This is all wrong! Why must we suffer so? It needn't be like this. No. There must be a way to restore things to the way they were. To reclaim the perfect paradise we once had. No, my friends. Suffering exists. And we cannot pretend otherwise. No civilization, however great, could eliminate it. If we would live, we must accept it as our constant companion. Let us not seek to forget this tragedy. Let us carry it in our hearts, that we may grow stronger and know true happiness. We can't accept it. We won't accept it. It will be ours again. A world free of sorrow! No, it will not. For there has ever been sorrow. Mankind was but spared its biting sting for a time. So please, open your eyes to try and reclaim those lives we lost by sacrificing yet more isn't wisdom. It is weakness. No paradise is without its shadows. If we cannot accept this truth and learn from our pain, then our plight shall be repeated. As it is. What are they doing? They're sacrificing themselves. Oh, mighty Zodiac! God, born of our boundless faith, we bid you hear our prayer. Oh, no. Accept this offering of lives and deliver unto us 
the lives we once had. Deliver unto us the days of old, the days when the star was a font of love, and we knew naught but bliss. Oh. They decided to go that route. You would destroy it? Our beautiful world? Lands that stretched on forever. Skies one could drown in. The heartbeat of nature, silent yet strong. And amidst it all, a people. Beacons of light and life. Laughter that warmed my heart like naught else before. They are my meaning and my purpose. My love. In spite of, or perhaps because of this, I choose to believe in mankind's potential in his ability to find a way forward. So let there be no way back. From that temptation, I sunder us. No more shall man have wings to bear him to paradise. Henceforth, he shall walk. All is excruciating pain. I breathe fire and torment. I birth a world of suffering to mire and plague. In one fleeting moment, lives come and go, ever moving towards the unknown. And in that fleeting moment, they cry for the answer to the question. Why, given life, are they meant to suffer, to die? As fragmented, imperfect beings, yours is a never-ending quest. A quest to find your purpose, knowing your end is assured. Find the strength to continue when all strength has left you. To find joy even as darkness descends. And amidst deepest despair, light 
everlasting. A conjunction has begun to form, an intertwining of your time and mine. When you truly understand what is at stake, and your journey has prepared you to surmount the insurmountable, then shall I honor the promise made in another time, another age. That was the promise she was talking about. I did ask when she said that in the boat. I was like, what is that promise? I did not know. Got me going a little bit here, guys. Are you okay? I'm okay. I'll survive. Are you are you a little did somebody cut some onions? It did, yeah. Somebody cut some onions hey. a little bit. Oh. A little bit, yeah. That one got you. Yeah. Wow. It was this the cutscene coupled with the song again. It's always this song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's it for Final Fantasy. Until next time.